Octavian defeats two enemies in one campaign post Caesar Civil Wars. Let's go. All caught up after this one, ladies and gentlemen. The beginning of Octavian's invasion of Sicily had been defined by misfortune. Storms had wreaked havoc amongst his ships, and skirmishes with the Pompeian navy were mainly detrimental to Octavian's cause, resulting in numerous delays. However, Lepidus had successfully established a foothold in the west of that Sicily, he did. and the appointment of Agrippa as overall commander of the expedition had resulted in a turn of fortune for Octavian, with the Caesarian forces securing their first significant naval victory at Mile. In this episode, we shall look at how the Caesarians built on this success, and ultimately managed to finally conquer Sicily okay. and crush the Pompeian faction once and for all. Caesar may be gone, but his legacy was clearly making a big stir in the world, and that was to continue basically two for the price of one on top. Check it out. Agrippa's victory had been well earned, and he managed to take advantage of the situation by landing a portion of his forces in the north of Sicily around Tindaris. Though he had not That's been able we to cripple the episode. Pompeian navy, most of the surviving vessels had managed to slip past Agrippa's force and rejoin Sextus. Octavian, meanwhile, was attempting to capitalize on Agrippa's victory and led his portion of the army and fleet, totaling three legions and perhaps 150 ships to the west of Sicily, landing around Tauromenium in the early summer of 36 mm -hmm. BC. He had underestimated Sextus. As his men began to fortify their camp, they saw the Pompeian fleet closing in, oh, while the Pompeian army the fleet advanced just parallel up. along the coast. Seeing that Octavian's forces were distracted, fortifying their position, Sextus ordered his cavalry to attack, harassing the Caesarian legions where they could. Still, Octavian's men were able to fend off the attacks and complete their defences. Mm. Nevertheless, Octavian was in a bad position, with his land forces surrounded in their fort, his navy blockaded, and his supply line to the Italian mainland cut off. Recognizing that the situation would be here? unwinnable without a secure supply line, Octavian assigned Cornificius, a man who had distinguished himself under Caesar, as commander of the land forces. At the same time, Octavian took control of the ships. Nice. Having heard of Agrippa's victory over the Pompeian fleet, he assumed that his larger fleet would be able to find similar success. Still, Ooh. the resulting battle once again proved to be a disaster for Octavian. <clears throat> the extant He's sources not do not give a detailed account of the battle itself, but they report that Octavian lost many ships, many of the sailors who abandoned ships and made it to shore getting cut down by the Pompeian cavalry. Octavian Ouch. barely escaped with his life, and rather than retreating to his legions on Sicily, was forced back to the Italian mainland. He desperately sent messages to Agrippa, requesting all his forces to move as quickly as possible to Cornificius's position, and Which ordered he does, another three Agrippa legions to cross the G. straits from Italy to Sicily, planning to follow shortly after. Effectively abandoned in Sicily, Cornificius realized how dire his situation was. With the supply line cut, it was only a matter of time before he and his men were starved out of their position. Shit. He drew his men up for battle, but the Pompeians refused the engagement. With few other options available, Octavian's general prepared his men to fight north towards Agrippa's men. The legions marched in a hollow square, with the unarmed and wounded men in the center, and were constantly harassed by missile and light cavalry troops, including some of the renowned Numidian light cavalry that had sided with Sextus. But... Broken terrain and constant Pompeian attacks made their march painfully slow. To make things worse, the army had also moved with very few supplies, and the Shit. combination of the summer heat and harassing tactics from Sextus's men made it almost impossible for the men to find water. Cornelius was eventually forced to abandon his wounded men to make a better pace. After five days of dehydration and constant harassment, Cornificius's men were at their breaking point and in no fit shape to fight. Sextus's men began to close in to deal the final blow. 
but suddenly three of Agrippa's legions just a gripper one of his lieutenants emerged the Pompeian force retreated in the face of these reinforcements and the remnants of Cornificius's troops were finally able to ensure Agrippa's camp safety around Mile. yes Agrippa Agrippa successfully managed to take the stronghold of Tyndaris in the meantime and Octavian rejoined him here bringing more legions from the Italian mainland in total, he now had a staggering 21 legions in Sicily, not including the forces under Lepidus. In the face <laughs> in of such just opposition, Sicily. Sextus was forced oh, to retreat to my. the Polaris Peninsula. Lepidus's operations around Lilibaeum had been largely successful, but he had failed to take the city itself, and a really? reinforcing force sent by Sextus made him give up the endeavor. Rather he than to tying give it up, up his legions well. in a prolonged siege, he marched across the island to Octavian and Agrippa. From this point, the Pompeians' fate was effectively sealed. Yeah. The Caesareans had an overwhelming numerical superiority on land and at sea. Sextus was effectively pinned in the peninsula, with Messana as his last significant holdout in the island's east. Initially, Octavian and Agrippa planned to starve Sextus into submission. Still, Lepidus had become an increasing problem constantly arguing with Octavian and insisting that he should have just as much command as Octavian. Hmm, he yeah, was you've not done wrong. nothing. Politically, Octavian was in a dangerous position. Lepidus so far had reasonable success in Sicily, while Octavian's forces really? had suffered numerous setbacks. But as I mean, result, he hasn't actually achieved anything, has he? would be able to supplant Octavian as the joint most powerful man in Rome. Rumours had even circulated that Lepidus was in secret communication with Sextus. Octavian no longer had the time to defeat Sextus at his leisure. He needed a decisive victory to mm. crush Sextus and establish himself as the undisputed victor over Lepidus. How's Octavian gonna do it with Lepidus in order to right there? This, Octavian and Agrippa began increasing the amount of pressure on Sextus's position. Octavian taking any towns that continued to supply the Pompeians, while Agrippa maintained a blockade at sea. With time running out, Sextus had no choice but to draw his navy out for battle, hoping to break Agrippa's fleet and open up a route for supplies and retreat. The two fleets, roughly equal in size at approximately 300 ships, met just off the coast of Naulicus. Sextus had learnt much from his navy's previous engagement at Mile, okay. increasing the size of his ships to match the larger Caesarian ones. Ooh, so he changed Agrippa, his however, tactic. Had made Very his own nice. Adaptions, inventing a new kind of weapon, the harpax. Roman ships had previously used the corvus, a bridge with a large nail at one end, to yeah. pin enemy ships for boarding. The harpax, on the other hand, was a large grappling hook fired from a ballista-like device. It could be fired from a distance and then used a so winch a to drag distance. the enemy ship close for boarding and was fitted with a long metal sheath near the hook to prevent the ropes from being cut. It was an ingenious device. Nice. That's sick. The battle began and it quickly became apparent that Agrippa's new invention was as formidable as it was creative. Shit. Sextus's men had never fought against such a device and thus had no means of defense against it. Some that were caught by the Harpax tried to back paddle, but this only tired the men hmm. and made their ships slower and more sluggish. Many were caught and dragged toward Agrippa's forces and boarded. Sextus's men, to their credit, fought bravely on the decks, each ship becoming its own but miniature battlefield. Agrippa showing From the his military the might once again. Such a fucking sick general, cuz. Urging their allies on with shouts of encouragement. However, it soon became apparent to all that Agrippa had the decisive advantage. Yep. Sextus's fleet attempted to withdraw through the straits, but, they get caught? but many ships were caught and forced onto the beaches, the vessels burnt and the sailors captured. The precise number of ships lost on each side is hard to gauge, mm. though Appian claims that only 17 of Sextus's ships escaped, Sextus among them with Agrippa's men successfully capturing or burning the vast majority of the Pompeian fleet, mainly thanks to the Harpax. Whether this figure is accurate or Naval not is hard to say, man. Fuck but that it certainly shit. seems that Sextus's navy lost most of its ships 
while Agrippa's losses were comparatively light. It had been Agrippa's finest hour so far, and had given Octavian the clear victory he so badly needed. In the immediate aftermath, Sextus fled to Messana, abandoning his army in the area. Leaderless, they quickly surrendered to Octavian. Nice. Sextus recalled the eight legions around Lilibaeum, seemingly intending to make a stand with them around Messana. However, before they arrived, more and more of Sextus's inner circle began to defect, and Sextus abandoned the island of Sicily with his family. I couldn't even defend it. Antony. Hoping Had that to he just would find give safety up. there in what recompense pussy. for Sextus having given sanctuary to Antony's mother in the past. The Pompeian legions that arrived in Messana found themselves leaderless and were quickly besieged by the Caesarian armies under the command of Lepidus and Agrippa. Shit! They have to concede here, right? The Pompeians quickly sent peace envoys to negotiate, Agrippa being ordered not to concede anything until Octavian arrived on the scene. Lepidus, however, had other plans, and agreed to allow the Pompeian legions to join him, granting them the right to sack Messana in return. Lepidus and Pompey's men thus plundered the city throughout the night, Agrippa's legions maintaining their position outside the city. That makes Agrippa Combined and with his forces Octavian from look Lepidus better. Lepidus now had a total of 21 legions under his personal oh, command, shit. roughly equal to those under Octavian and Agrippa. He now chose to make his move. Oh, he's making his move now. Declaring himself as the conqueror of Sicily, Lepidus sent word to towns in Sicily to reject any envoys sent from Octavian and listen only to those sent by himself. <laughs> Octavian he... reacted quickly, confronting oh, Lepidus, what a dickhead. who offered Octavian control of Sicily and North Africa in return for Gaul, Hispania and Illyricum. Effectively, it was an offer to restore the separation initially agreed upon in 43 BC by the Second Triumvirate. Octavian, of course, refused. The soldiers began to worry that after just having proved victorious in the Sicilian campaign against Sextus, they would be swept into another war. Oh, they're going to. Octavian. Oh, they're going to. The it's the Roman Empire. These misgivings this happens. And initially sent agents into Lepidus's camp to gauge the loyalties of the legions before entering himself, leaving a significant cavalry bodyguard at the gates. Many of the previously What's Octavian going to do were here? worried that the peace treaty would not be valid unless Octavian endorsed it. Many of Lepidus's men were embittered that they had to share the spoils of looting Messana with men they had only recently been fighting against. Octavian proclaimed that he would accept all who wanted to join him, and many pledged their loyalty there and then. Interesting. In his tent, Lepidus heard that his army was dissolving and stormed out. A fight of some kind broke out, one of Octavian's entourage getting killed and Octavian himself almost getting wounded. Ooh. Octavian retreated to his cavalry, and what happened next is not entirely clear. No, but Appian paints a picture Octavian's of Octavian go for with it. only his cavalry engaging in some kind of fighting with Lepidus's men that remained loyal, but that eventually more and more of his men defected a trickle becoming a flood. Cassius Dio's version differs. According to his account, after entering Lepidus's camp, Octavian was soundly rebuffed by the men and resorted to besieging the camp, hmm. Lepidus's men defecting throughout the course of the siege as the only practical option, despite having high respect for Lepidus. Effectively, what do you think one happened? version has Octavian's power Let of know personality convincing droves of men to his side, with an incompetent Lepidus being unaware of what was going on and losing almost all his legions after a short scuffle with Octavian. While the other has Octavian needing to effectively force Lepidus's men to join him through the threat of siege. Octavian, a master propagandist, managed to heavily control the narrative following the end of the civil war. Such discrepancies are relatively common, and there is often bias in favor of mm. Octavian and against his enemies. Okay. The consensus of modern historians is that the most likely course of events was somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Octavian marched into the camp with his bodyguard, managing to win over some men, but the majority stayed loyal to Lepidus. As a result, Octavian used force to threaten the loyalists to join his side. The end result, however, is clear. The entirety of Lepidus's army, all 21 legions, 
passed over to Octavian's command. All 21 legions are now Octavians. This was in Jokes. effect the end of Lepidus's career. In the aftermath, he was stripped of the powers of a triumvir, and Octavian and Antony stood alone as the rulers of the Republic. Lepidus has gone down in history as incompetent and a bit of a fool, largely thanks to pro-Octavian and anti-Lepidus biased sources. It is a rather damning evaluation. Lepidus had played the game well, but the decks were arguably stacked against him. Antony and Octavian he both tried had his the best, benefit but, uh, of being he was much more apparent heirs to Caesar's legacy, and both benefited from the resources left by Caesar after he died. His final gambit in Sicily was possibly the best move he could make given the circumstances. He had a strong army in the area, and the offer he made to Octavian was not as unfair as it may initially seem. Yeah, he was promised Africa that stuff Sicily, before. Now that they had been reined in under Caesarian control, had long been two of the Republic's most productive areas, and Lepidus did not try to cut Octavian out of the Triumvirate entirely. Unfortunately for him, however, he was matched against one of the greatest political titans of history, Octavian. He really was. One point regarding Lepidus that perhaps is too easily overlooked is that he survived despite losing his triumvir powers. He oh, would later okay. die at the ripe old age of 76. Though his career was admittedly rather lackluster after the Sicilian campaign, few men could claim to have supported Julius Caesar. He was still Caesar, able to stay the that long. aftermath of his assassination and challenged Octavian but nonetheless lived to tell the tale. Yeah, he was brother. Often to avoid the he played, did, he did play the game well. And Antony. Though we should not get ahead of ourselves and laud him as a political genius, dismissing him as an incompetent fool seems yeah. inaccurate. Which and I was unjust. doing, so I shouldn't have done that. Because, yeah, he did play it well. With Sextus having fled the he was island still an idiot at times, but he played it well. To the Caesarian side, Octavian's invasion of Sicily was over. Disasters had plagued it at the beginning but a combination of sheer tenacity on his behalf and the talented generalship of Agrippa had assured victory. Yeah, man, Agrippa was just a Sicily, dom the last for this last holdout, couple of videos. The faction videos. was effectively crushed. However, Sextus Annihilate, survived the crushed. ordeal and successfully made it to Asia Minor. There, he hoped to find mercy under the protection of the only man happened, now though? powerful enough to challenge Octavian. Did Antony. he protect him? Antony, however, was currently in the middle of his own military expedition, hmm. the Roman invasion of Parthia. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this oh, video. So you're not going to tell us? Description for a free trial. Not going to tell us? Well, if you're looking forward to the next episode, I'm going to say it for them. Then definitely hit their notification bell. If you haven't already, head over to their page. That link's in the description box down below. They make amazing content. That means that currently, at this point in time, when I've finished recording this, we're all caught up on this, this, this series. I definitely think there's more to come, and I'm looking forward to finding out what that is. So, if you guys are as well, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for our videos, and we will catch you in the next video.